Sidney Crosby was flying all over the rink yesterday at PPG Paints Arena, and he looks very much like a player who could make his return, his season debut tonight against the Flames. Good morning to you. Good Thursday morning. I'm Dayan Kovacevic of DK Pittsburgh Sports, and this is Daily Shot of Penguins. It comes your way bright and early every weekday. If you're into football and or baseball, I also offer up daily shots of Steelers and Pirates right where you found this. But tonight it is Penguins versus Flames, and my God, has Calgary been hot. You don't often see a Western team come way out to this side of the continent and start sweeping through everybody. But that's exactly what the Flames have done, taking the first four games of their road trip through New York, Washington, Detroit, and New Jersey and outscoring their opponents by a combined 17-7. to It's been impressive. And this is the last game of that trip, so they'll be intensely motivated to end it on a high note and you'd have to have followed a team around on a long trip like that to know what I'm talking about because I've seen the Penguins do it well they'll win the first three or something like that of the trip and the last thing that they want is to make a long flight home on a down note after doing that much good along the way, especially when it's unexpected. I mean, the Flames lost their first two games this year. Nobody was really thinking much of them at all. Of course, you never do. They're the Flames. So this could be a pretty neat event, both from the team standpoint and, of course, if Sid were to return. We'll see how that goes. We're definitely going to have more of a clue after the morning skate today at roughly 11.15 a.m., when Mike Sullivan's expected to meet with the media. And for the record, this was what the head coach said after Sid's highly intense practice yesterday on the same ice surface. Well, his, his status right now is, is day-to-day. He's uh, obviously, you guys watch him progressing in practice, and he participated out there full capacity today. Um, you know, we'll see how he responds We'll listen to the medical staff and we'll make decisions accordingly. Um, but we're real encouraged with his progress. You know, we think he's getting real close, and uh, you know, we'll take each day as it comes and make decisions accordingly. Um, as far as you know, are there are there any like medical hurdles or anything like that? Um, not to my knowledge. So it sure sounds like if it isn't tonight, it would be Saturday against the Devils. We'll see how that goes. One way or another. Someone's coming out of the lineup. And that got me to take a closer look at the lines that were utilized at this practice yesterday and how it might affect things moving forward. Here are the lines, and these are interesting. Sid was, guess what, on the first line between Jake Gensel and, this was interesting, Evan Rodriguez. Now, that is, of course, Brian Rust's spot, but as we've all seen, Rodriguez has been arguably the Penguins' very best player at any position through these first six games. Really impressive. So you reward him. Gensel, Crosby, and Rodriguez. Second line has Jason Zucker, Drew O'Connor, and Kasperi Kapanen in that order left to right. O'Connor at center is something... It's it's short termy and I'm okay with it in that context, but that kid needs to be allowed to go banging on the walls, and he's going to have a much better chance of doing that on the wings. Anything that anybody can do to get Kappen in his first goal and to get him going a little bit would be good. But I don't I don't want to fall off track here. Zach Aston Reese, Teddy Bluger, and Brock McGinn are staying together, and the fourth line is. Dominic Simone, Brian Boyle, and Sam Lafferty. I thought Lafferty was terrific the other night against Tampa. And apparently I'm not alone because the forward who was rotating through that fourth line and thus would appear to be the next healthy scratch was Danton Heinen. Heinen had a goal in each of the first three games and has kind of fallen off. He hasn't been terrible, but he has 
I saw this in the preseason too. He has these lapses where he just looks like he's barely there. You don't even know that he played. I'm not sure what that's all about. He hasn't been here long enough for me to figure that out. But here's where this gets fun. Think who all is going to come out when all of these forwards are healthy. This portion of Daily Shot of Penguins is brought to you by Fubo TV. The monthly cost of cable is over 200 bucks. Fubo TV is 65 bucks a month to watch all the same channels including AT&T Sportsnet Pittsburgh and right now Fubo TV is offering our listeners of this show a 7-day free trial and 15% off your first month just for listening to this. <laughs> Just go to FuboTV.com slash DK to take advantage of this. Who all would come out when Rust and Evgeny Malkin and Jeff Carter and, of course, Sid all come back? That's four forwards on top of this group that I just listed for you, which already had an extra guy in Heinen. Who are you taking out of there? Well, start with who you aren't taking out of there. It's pretty safe to say that Sid and Jake and Russ would be your first line. It's also somewhat safe to say, I would think, that Malkin would be between Kapanen and Zucker, but then is it really... See, this is where right off the bat I start cringing a little bit because I'm watching Drew O'Connor. You're watching Drew O'Connor. The coaching staff, his teammates are watching Drew O'Connor. This is not a player you want to stunt, nor is it a player that you want to store on a bottom six line. It doesn't make sense in either context. You want this player in a top six role. And to my mind, if that means knocking literally any of the four default mode top six wingers out, I'm happy to do that. I'm happy to do that. Because O'Connor offers several things that those guys don't, that the Penguins really, really, really need. You know, being big, being fast, being young, all that other stuff. He gives them a very different look and feel when he's on the rink, and you can't just default mode him out of the top six. You can't just say, well, kid, someday you'll make it. You'll have your turn. No, 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 no. You have to balance what you know, meaning the experienced players, and you know certain things like, well, okay, you know Jake's going to score X number of goals. You know Rust is going to score X number. You know Kasperi Kapanen has it in him to score this or that. It, you have to balance that with what is on a higher trajectory. What is something that still has a ceiling that's way above where it is currently? Because that's what you need to win a championship. You need pleasant surprises like an O'Connor, and you can't bury them. And I'm not even, I haven't even touched on the other lines. Let's presume that the third one stays together, you know, the Bluger line, Aston Reese and McGinn. Where are you putting Jeff Carter? (laughs) Where are you putting Jeff Carter? Come on, let's hear from you. Where are you putting them? It's not easy, is it? It's not easy. To me, you got to think outside the box a little bit here. What if you put Sid on a line? Just just hear this out. You know, no idea is a bad idea, right? Put Sid on a line between O'Connor and Carter, and he'd have the biggest flanking wingers he's ever had in his life. Both of them can fly. Both of them can shoot. You could be giving Sid a whole second lease on life. Maybe you trade Jake. There are teams out there that would want Jake Gensel. I'm going to go nuts here with some of this. I I don't want to take this too far. 
you get what I'm saying here. This is not the time to just say, well, we're just going to go like this. We're just going to do it like this. You've got to think a little bit. You've got to break the box a little bit. When we come back, just one question. Just one question, and that's always brought to you on this program by the good people at the Greater Pittsburgh Community Food Bank, where they're committed to providing food for all of our neighbors in need, and they in turn need your help. Check out pittsburghfoodbank.org to learn how one dollar from you can be turned into five full meals produced and delivered. One dollar equals five meals. PittsburghFoodBank.org. Tony Teeman has today's J1Q. Tony says, okay, DK, is Captain ever going to wake up? He has some good moments, but my gosh, sometimes he's invisible. You know, Tony, he, he has to wake up in the sense that he is a scorer. If he's not scoring, he's not doing that much to help you because he's not some 200-foot complete player. He's not a Dominic Simone where you can say, well, at least he's bringing us this or he's doing that. And that's kind of been what's strange about Kapanen. You're talking about him waking up as if it's an effort thing, and there's not much really in watching Kapanen to date that would lead me to agree with that. So let me start with that respectfully. Kapanen's peripherals, his advanced analytics, and just plain old me watching from the press box tell me that he's given it what he has. What he's not doing is he's not even not finishing. That'd be one thing if he was getting robbed or he was banking, you know, shots off of you know, end boards or pipes or whatever. He's not really even getting his shot off. He's not bearing down. Uh, that's a term that, you know, goes to the earliest, youngest levels of hockey, that when you go to shoot, you don't just flick it. Uh, you don't assume that the shot is going to get off. You really, really set yourself, your whole body and your brain and everything else into a shooting mode. When I'm watching Kapanen now, and he has the puck, a lot. He's doing a lot of circling around the zone, seeing what he can uh, distribute to someone else. And I, I get that he's well-rounded and maybe he himself kind of appreciates that because he's always been known for his finishing touch. But there comes a point where you got to unearth your inner Jeff Carter and just say, you know what, fellas, get me the puck because I'm going to shoot it. OK, and the next time you give it to me, even if you're open, I'm still going to shoot it. Why? Because I can and because it'll help the team if I score a goal. If I'm the coaching staff, my only admonition of Kapanen right now, and that means this very day heading into that game tonight against the Flames, is to tell him to just go all gunner. Tell him to go like a mercenary onto the ice, thinking about nothing other than grip it and rip it. He'll get a goal, and in all likelihood, it'll be one of those goals like uh, Carter got, remember his 400th down in Sunrise a couple of weeks ago, and Carter afterwards in a room with us down there, and he has this big smile on his face, and he starts talking about his 400th goal. He says, yeah, I mean, there's, that's, that's a very typical goal for him. Why? Because he just shoots it. He just shoots it. Somebody on every line has to do that. Look at the line that the Penguins would have in place tonight. You'd have a Connor, who, of course, can do a lot of different things for you, not least of which is set a screen or a pick for you, make sure that the goalie can't see your shot, and you've got Jason Zucker over there, who's way more of a passer than he is a shooter. So be that guy. Be that guy. Find a way 
to get it there and get it there like you mean it. Once Kapanen puts one or two in, he's going to have a nice little run for the Penguins because his shot is so naturally good. It's so naturally dangerous that it's hard to keep it in a slump unless you're not even utilizing it. I appreciate the question. I appreciate everybody listening to Daily Shot of Penguins. I'll be at the rink tonight. We're going to do another one of these tomorrow. Thank you.